Hello and welcome to another episode of Game Creator Tips and Tricks. Today is the day we'll dig into the dialogue module, which has been asked by quite a lot of people. Under the Game Creator Preferences window, you'll see there's a new tab called Dialogue. Here you can change the default skin and all your dialogues and customize effects, such as making the text appear as it's been typewritten. But for now, we'll leave those parameters as they are and see how to get started creating a dialogue between characters. A dialogue is nothing more than a component that is attached to any scene game object. You can create one right clicking the hierarchy panel and selecting Create, Game Creator, Other, Dialogue. Notice that you can also use the Add Component menu to add a dialogue component to any existing game object. As you can see, there's a content box and a toolbar with a collection of icons. Let's see what they mean. Starting from the right, we see there's a full screen button. Clicking it will let you have a wider panoramic view of the dialogue, in case you have long conversations. Click it again to go back to the normal view or press Command Space. Next to this button we have a search box, which will allow you to search any text line inside the content view. Then there's the delete button, which as its name implies, allows you to delete items from the content. Notice that if you ever forget what any of these icons mean, you can hover them with your mouse and a small box will appear with information about that particular icon. The last three buttons are the core of the dialog, allowing you to add content, branch, condition and join back together the different narrative lines. These buttons are, from left to right, the text element, which represents a single line of the dialogue. The choice group, which contains all the settings for the decision the player has to make. The choice element, which is an atomic item for a choice group. We'll cover these choices more in depth in later in this video. For now, we'll just focus on the text element. Click it to add a new line in the dialogue content. Select the new line and notice that at the bottom of the content a new window has appeared. This window has four tabs, Message, Actions, Conditions, and Settings. Inside the Messages, you can add the text of the dialogue line, add a translation in case your game is localized, and add a voice clip. By default, the text line will be displayed and stay there until the, the user presses any key. The Autoplay property allows you to automatically jump to the next line after a timeout. If you add an audio clip, a button will appear below the Autoplay field. Upon click it, it will automatically set the timeout value of the duration of the audio file. Let's see the rest of the tabs. The Action tab allows you to execute a set of actions during, before or after the dialog line. You can choose when the actions are executed in the Execute Behavior drop-down. The Conditions tab allows you to skip the current dialog line and all of its children if a group of conditions are not met. For example, you can make a character say hello the first time it interacts with the player and say hello again the subsequent times. The Settings tab allows you to change the skin of a particular line and any of the effects applied to the text. Let's put all this together in an example, and then, later, we'll explain how choices and choice groups work using an example. Meet Hogarth, a shepherd from the Northlands. Hogarth's favorite sheep escaped the other night, and he is quite worried. When we talk to him, he'll first say hello and ask us if, if we've seen his sheep. Then, we'll have a chance to answer yes or no. Upon answering, he'll say something according to the player's choice. You can download this test scene from the link down in the description. To start a dialogue with Ogre, we can add a trigger component to this character and set it to execute when clicked. We'll hit the Create Actions button to add one and we'll search the action called Dialogue. This action executes a dialogue and will hold the actions component until the conversation finishes, so everything you put below will happen after the dialogue. Now create a new dialogue object and attach it to the previous action. Let's begin by making the farmer introduce himself. To do so, 
Click on the Add Text Element button in the Dialogs toolbar and fill the text box with something like Greetings Wanderer. Now we'll create a second text element, but this one will only be shown the first time the player talks to Ogre. To do so, simply create another text element and fill it with You're the first person I've seen around here in months. We can add the condition and check if a variable called farmer first time is true. Remember that to use a variable, you need to create it in the variables preference window. Let's not forget that once the line is set, we need to set the variable to true so that it is only set once. Before continuing, let's hit play and see this in action. Moving the player close to Ogurth and clicking on him, we can see how the conversation starts playing. After it finishes, we can click again and see how the second line is skipped. Exciting, huh? Well, let's bring some interaction to the equation. Let's make Ogurth ask a player whether he has seen his lost ship. We can do this by creating a choice group. A choice group has the exact same fields as the text element, but also has a choice tab. Let's add Have you seen my ship? as a text line and click on the choices tab. As you can see, this tab controls how the different choices are presented. Time choices, as their name implies, allows you to haste the player into making a decision. If the player doesn't answer within the defined time window, you can either choose to select a random option, the first one, or skip the entire response tree. You can also choose to randomize the order of the different choices. Now let's get to the fun part. To create a choice option, click on the little arrow button. A choice element looks pretty much like a text element. The main difference is that it doesn't have a settings tab. That's because a choice inherits the settings of its choice group parent. Fill the choice with something like I swear for my honor, I haven't seen any ship. Create another choice and set the answer as I saw one heading south from here. The conversation follows the branch selected by the player and skip whatever is below the rest of the other choices from the choice group. We'll add a couple of text lines below each choice just for aesthetic purposes. And finally, we want Ogre to say goodbye independently of the ramifications of the previously selected choice. To do so, we'll create a new text element and we'll drag it to the bottom of the content. Let's hit play and see the result. 